Howdy everyone, Mr. Kazi here with another problem of the week. And get out your calculators, get your periodic tables, get a pencil, and let's get started. This week's problem, mercury and bromide will react with each other to produce mercury 2 bromide. What mass of mercury 2 bromide is produced from the reaction of 10 grams of mercury and 10 grams of bromine? Also, what mass of the reagent is left over? Now this is a limiting reactant problem, and so we're going to have to kind of put together a plan. So let's create a plan and uh, begin this problem. First, let's write a balanced chemical equation, determine the mole ratios, find the limiting reactant, calculate the moles of product, then take the moles of product and determine the grams of product, and then turn the grams and then determine the grams of the leftovers. And we can do all of this by uh, using our knowledge of stoichiometry and making sure that we know what molar mass is and using our periodic table, we can find all the information we need to do this. And so there's the plan. Let's go to the magic blackboard and write our balanced equation. All right, so uh, both mercury and bromine are liquid at room temperatures. And when we combine them, we get mercury to bromide. You might be asking, how did I know how to write that? Well, first of all, remember bromine is diatomic. And then I remember that mercury 2 has a plus 2 charge. Now, you can get that off of your list of polyatomic ions or that has the um, metallic ions on it. And if you don't have that list, you can always shoot me an email and ask for it. But I believe it's available on the website. Now, remember that bromine is a negative 1 charge, so we're unbalanced there. But if we just get another bromine, then that balances out the charges and we realize that it's HGBr2. Now also notice here that there's one mercury, one mercury, two, two bromine, and two bromine. Now when we look at this whole thing here, um, there, it's a balanced equation. All the coefficients are one. So this makes this problem really easy. All right, let's check the board again. Mole ratios. Well, there are three mole ratios that I have available to me. There's the ratio of mercury to bromine, that's one to one. And mercury to mercury to bromide, which if you look at all the coefficients, one to one again. And then there's the ratio of bromine to uh, mercury bromide, and that's also one to one. So all our ratios are one to one, which is pretty good. So it means whatever amount of mercury I use, I'm gonna use the same mole ratio, the same mole amount of bromine. And whatever amount of mercury I use, I'm going to get the same moles of mercury bromide or mercury two bromide. Makes it very easy when it's one to one. Determine the limiting reactant. Grams times molar mass equals moles. With that in mind, there's the grams of mercury I started with, multiplied by the molar mass, which I got off the periodic table. Now, if I take and just plug and chug that, I'm going to get 0 0.0499 moles. Of mercury and I went with three sig figs since over here um, we have three sig figs on the mercury 10 grams of bromide multiply that by the molar mass of bromine now remember you have to double bromine because in nature bromine is diatomic plug and chug that and I get 0 0.0626 moles per bromide and that means that Mercury is the limiting reactant because I'm going to run out of this before I run out of this. And uh, bromine is going to be the leftovers. The mass of HGBr2, well, I'm going to use mercury because mercury is the limiting reactant. I can't get any more uh, mercury 2 bromide than what mercury I have. It doesn't matter how much bromine I have now. Mercury is my limiting reactant. Moles of uh, bromine are going to be changed to moles of mercury 2 bromide. I want to plug and chug that and notice how easy that went. You might be asking yourself, why did I just put up 0 0.0499 moles of mercury 2 bromide? Well, remember the ratio is one to one. So however much mercury I used in moles, 
That's how much HGBr2 I'm going to get in moles. It's a one-to-one -one mole ratio, so it's the same thing. Therefore, all I have to do is take mercury-2 bromide, calculate its molar mass, which is adding up everything off of the periodic table, and then I plug and chug, and I get 18.0 grams of mercury-2 bromide, and that's because I have three sig figs. You probably came out with like 17.9 or something of that nature, but I have uh, three sig figs, and after rounding off for sig figs, it's 18.0 grams of mercury-2 bromide. Let's calculate the leftover. Now, since bromine is going to be the um, leftover reactant, I'm going to go ahead and uh, realize, well, 10 grams in 10 grams is 20 grams of reactants. And I got 18 grams of product. Well, if I just subtract those two, I have to have 2 grams of leftover uh, Br2. That's the conservation of mass. And conservation of mass states that whatever masses I start with are the masses I have to end with. Now, does it always work like that in the laboratory? No, because we make mistakes, but not because the law is incorrect. All right, let's review. We wrote a balanced chemical equation. We then determined the mole ratios from the balanced equation. We then went to find the limiting reactant. And then we calculated the moles of product using the limiting reactant. In this case, it was pretty easy determined uh, the grams of product, and then determined the grams of the leftovers. All right, if you have any questions, send an email to Mr. Kazi at mrkazi.com. Uh, just one last closing thought. A lot of times when um, you're doing problems like this, your teacher likes to give it to you in milliliters instead of grams. Well, just take the density. Remember, density equals mass divided by volume. Just take the density, multiply it to the volume, and that'll give you the mass. And then do the problem just like this. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube. Happy ions, everybody.